everybody. Welcome to Midweek Devotion. So glad that you have joined us today. And I hope you're having a great summer. Hope that you're enjoying your family vacation, enjoying your time. And I realize summertime is a crazy time with kids in sports and planning vacation and work stuff and just uh, just enjoying some time while it's nice outside. And so I don't want to take a long time today, but we do want to give you some word. We want to give you uh, this midweek devotion so that it encourages all of us. And uh, we're all walking the same path. And I appreciate all of our pastors and all of our ministers that share during midweek. And I hope that you are blessed by it. Okay. Hey, before we get into the word, Uh, This coming Sunday, we want you to join us because right after the third service, we are going to have a family movie day and we're going to be showing a family friendly movie. We're going to have some uh, food for you and it's just going to be a great time for our family to come together. And so make plans to have your family in church this coming Sunday and uh, we're just going to have a great day. All right. So remember that if you have a Bible or on your phone or right there with you, we're going to be in Psalms. Uh, 101, Psalms chapter 101. So at the beginning of chapters, we find, especially in the book of Psalms, we find some subheadings which kind of give us an intention of what the chapter is about and and and, and what it reads and, and, and kind of lays out for us uh, what's going on in the chapter. And in Psalms 101, the heading at the beginning of that chapter, it says, I will walk with integrity. All right. I will walk with integrity. This is a Psalm of David and he is writing this Psalm and he begins to talk about walking with Christ and living with Christ and 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 being everything that God wants us to be. All right. And that is our heart's desire. That is all of us. I want to be uh, so many people say, Pastor, I want to be closer to God and I just want to know what God wants me to do. Well, David kind of lays this out right here in 101, and everyone wants to know what's the will of God for my life. And so today, I I, I just want to share with you uh, eight things that David begins to share, all right, that you in your life can begin to apply to your life, and you'll begin to live closer to God, walking closer to God. It's, It's intentional things. It's things that you can do. It's not just things that happen, but you have to put your hand to them to do them, okay? And so uh, if I'm gonna title this, we're gonna call it Christian Living 101, all right? Christian Living 101. So in Psalms 101, David begins to to write to us and uh, we're just gonna walk down this chapter, okay? So the first thing that David talks about that we as Christians, we as followers of Christ, we as followers of God, what we need to be doing is this. We need to worship, And we need to meditate on the things of God, worship and meditate on scripture. We need to worship and meditate on the character of God. So let's read what what Psalms 101 verses one and two. Let's read what it has to say. It says, I will sing of steadfast love and justice to you, O Lord. I will make music. So right there, that's the worship portion. You should be worshiping all the time. You should be worshiping every day. You should be giving God praise under uh, uh, under your breath while you're walking through the checkout line. You should be saying, God, I thank you and I praise you that I'm able to buy these groceries. When you're driving down the road, you should be giving God praise. When you get up in the morning, when you go to bed at night, there's always something to praise God about. David said we should be worshiping. Verse number two, he says, I will ponder the way that is blame- blameless. I will meditate on the way that is blameless. I will think about the things of God. I will think about the way that I should be doing things. Is this Christ-like character? Is this godly what I'm doing? Or is this more so what I think is right? Am I doing what God wants or am I doing what I want? Am I doing what Jesus has called me to do or am I doing of my own opinion and my own will? Uh, Matthew chapter five, verse number eight says this. Jesus is speaking, Sermon of the Mount. He's talking, he says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. If we begin to walk blamelessly, if we begin to ponder the things that are blameless, if we get into our scripture and begin to study the word of God, the Bible calls us that that we're going to be the pure at heart and that we are going to be blessed. You're going to see the things of God in your life. You're going to see that eternal reward. But it takes you getting in your word and meditating on the word of God, praying over the word of God, worshiping God through song and through dance and through action, through the lifting of your hands, through turning everything off and just saying, God, I'm giving you this time. David writes, Christianity, Christian living 101, worship and meditate 
on the things of God. Now, verse number two, it goes down a little further and it says this, oh, when will you come to me? David is asking this question, Lord, I'm worshiping, I'm meditating, when will you come to me? Jesus speaks in John chapter 14, verse 23. He says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and he will come to him and make our home with him. Lord, when will you come to me? A lot of people are praying that. God, when will you come and answer my prayer? When, when you begin to apply the word to your life, when you begin to love the word of God and you begin to do what the word of God says, well, why, won't, why, why isn't my problem being fixed? Why, why don't I see the blessings of God like I do on someone else? Well, are you in the word and are you doing what the word says? Are you not living in fear? Are, are, are you walking away from the things that are ungodly and unholy? Are you leaving friends behind that you really need to leave behind? And are you developing godly relationships and mentorships with other people around you? You see, worship and meditation, that's the first thing, Christian Living 101. Worship God and ponder and live out the Word of God, all right? Second thing that David talks about goes down a little further. David begins to speak uh, there at the end of chapter 2. He says, I, or verse 2, he says, I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. And then he goes on to verse 3. I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. The second thing is this, decisions that honor God. You need to make decisions that are honoring God. God. We are good at making decisions based on our emotion and what we feel is right and what we think, well, this is what's best for me. But is it what God wants? David makes this statement. He says, I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. I like that statement. I like that statement because a lot of times when we go out in public, we want to put on our best face. But when we're at home, we'll tend to live a little bit different. And so we're one thing in one place and one thing in another place. David says, look, the place that is private, the place that it's just you, the place that your, just your family sees you, that's where you need to be walking with integrity the most. That is where you need to be living it out the most. You know what? Your kids should get the best of you and not the leftovers of you. We're, we're smiling and happy with everyone else outside of the walls of our home. But we come into our house and we're, we're yelling at our spouse and we're, we're, we're uh, grumpy and, and, and negative and, and hard to live with. You know what? You should be living out integrity within your home. Christianity 101, the decision that you're making, is it honoring God? Are you watching the right thing? Are you listening to the right thing? Do you have the right attitude in your home? All right. Um, what you let inside of you, that is what will come out in you. What you allow inside of your spirit and through your eyes and through your ears and, and the things you take in, that is what, uh, that's what will come out in your home. That's what you'll bring into your home. And so you need to check yourself. What's pouring into you? Is it godly things? And if it is, then that's what's going to come into your home. Do your decisions, do they honor God's ways or do they feed your self-desire? Are you feeding what you want or are you honoring God? Okay, so we're worshiping, we're meditating on God and the decisions that we're making, we're, we're praying about God, is this honoring you? God, is this what you want? Is this lifting you up? The third thing is this, we need to love people and not their junk. We need to love people and not the junk that they're in and the garbage that they're in, okay? Let's continue reading uh, the second part of verse number three. It says, I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. You know what? Sometimes people will come into our lives and the things that they do, they, they, they frustrate us and they annoy us. And we're thinking, you know, and they're like, I, I want to be free. And we think to ourselves, if you will just do this, just walk away from it. But sometimes just walking away from something isn't that easy. And so our job is to love people and not necessarily their junk. All right. Uh, the beginning of verse number four, the, uh, verse number four says, a perverse heart shall be far from me and I will know nothing of evil. We are to love people, but not their junk. You know what? Don't, don't bring their junk into your life, but instead pray that God delivers them from that stuff. There are people that I love and I care for and I pray with them all the time and I want to see them free. But you know what? I'm not going to go live in the same situations that they're in. A lot of people say, well, you know, I'll win them to Jesus if I go and do what they're doing. No, 
No, sin doesn't work that way. Because if you're a part of sin, it, it locks itself to you and it pulls you back down and it pulls you back in. And so you, need ha you, you have to make a decision. I'm going to love you, but I'm not going to be a part of the things that you're a part of. Oh, I'm going to talk with you, but I, and I'm going to pray for you, and, and I'll hang out with you. But, it's, but, but when, when you begin to start being that way and start doing those things that I no longer am a part of, uh, then, then I'm, gonna, I'm just going to walk away. I'm going to walk away. Jesus warns us in the Word of God. He, he, he says you, you need to be careful of the places that you go. Even if it looks evil, you don't need to go there. Even if it has the look and the appearance then, then you need to shun away from it, all right? You need to watch where you go and what you do. Love the people, but be careful what you do. Be careful what you're a part of. Be careful what environment you're in. Be careful the friends that are around you. So we're worshiping God, all right? We are uh, making decisions that honor God. We are loving people, but not their junk. The next one is this. You need to choose to follow the higher standards of God. God has set very high standards. And some people say, well, I can't achieve that. I can't obtain that by yourself. No, you cannot. But through the grace of Jesus Christ, you absolutely can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Everything that this word says that you can do, you can do it. And if you can't do it in your physical body, because we can't, we can do it through Jesus Christ. Let's hear what verse number five says in this Psalms. Whoever slanders his neighbor secretly, I will destroy. And whoever has a haughty look or an arrogant heart will not endure. All right, so he's calling out some behavior right here. He's calling out some character right here that is within us, okay? Jesus in Matthew 5, verse number 8, going back to the Sermon on the Mount, he says this. He says, look, these are my commandments, okay? And I'm paraphrasing right here. He says, the, the, these are the commandments. Yes, these are the commandments that Moses spoke. And, you know, you're not to lie. You're not to cheat. No, don't commit adultery. Don't murder. But then Jesus comes along. He says, here's the commandment, but here's what I expect you to do. And Jesus puts a greater emphasis. He says, these are the commandments, but this is what I, this is what the commandment means. And this is what it says. He says, look, there's a higher standard. There's a higher standard. How you're living right now, there's a higher standard. And God knows, listen to me, He knows that you can reach that higher standard. Oh, uh, but Pastor John, I'm, I'm trying and the devil's fighting me. He's going to fight you. It's foolish for us to think that He doesn't want to fight us. He wants to fight us, especially the closer we get to God, the stronger He fights. The more you walk closer to God, the stronger He's going to fight. And, he's gonna, and He doesn't fight fair. He plays dirty and He will hit you anywhere He can to knock you down. Listen to me. God has a higher standard. You need to, to shut down gossip in your life. People around you start talking gossip, shut them down. Hey, we're not going to talk about that person. We're not going to talk about that that's going on in their life. We're, we're not going to do that. We're not going to preface it by saying, oh, God bless them. Did you hear about what happened to so-and-so? No, we're going to shut down gossip. And we're not going to have any part of it. All right. Uh, we need to choose to be around people that are going to build us up and not tear us down. They're not going to look down upon us. You know what? There are people that are haughty. Here in the scripture, it says that whoever has a haughty look and an arrogant heart will not endure. A lot of Christians, quotations there, a lot of Christians will, will have a haughty spirit and a haughty attitude. Well, I'm a child of God and, and you're a sinner and, and, and you have this in your life and you're addicted to that and you're this and that. Listen to me. I don't want to be proud and arrogant. Let me tell you something. I'm a broken vessel that God has chosen to carry a perfect message. I am a broken vessel. And God says, I can use that. God uses broken vessels and he wants to use you. Don't get so proud. Don't get so high minded that you think you're better than everyone else because we're not. And this is Christianity 101. You need to choose to follow the high standards of God and not your own high standards. Follow God's standards because God's standard is love and grace and mercy. And so live by those things. All right, the next thing going on. Verse number six, he says, I will look, I will look with favor on the faithful in the land that they may dwell with me. He who walks in the way that is blameless shall minister to me. 
What is he saying right here? The next thing, Christianity 101, all right? Seek out godly people to walk with you. Seek out godly people to walk with you. You know what? It takes each other. It takes each other. Why didn't Jesus just call one disciple and say, come on, let's go? He called 12. Why? Because they worked with each other. They walked with each other. They helped each other. They ministered to each other. And it takes one another. It takes all of us to, to walk this walk. All right. I'm only strong because people have come along beside me and put their arm around me and say, come on, let me walk with you in this walk. And let's get closer to God together. We need each other. Our church needs you. We need you sitting on the pews. We need you serving on the dream team. Somebody is going to walk in the door of this church and you are going to be the only person that's going to be able to reach them and make an impact on them. That's why we need you. We walk together. We live this out together. Uh, there's a lot of good people in the world, but good people don't give godly advice. There's a lot of good people in your life. But good people don't give godly advice. We need people that are spiritually strong and mature to walk with young believers and to say, hey, this is what God says in his word. Hey, this is what God wants of our life. And so I need people to walk with me. I have mentors. You're a pastor. Yeah. And I have spiritual mentors that I call and I talk with and say, hey, I have this decision. I have this decision. Number one, will you pray with me? Number two, uh, what do you think? Is there anything from scripture that maybe you can share with me to open my eyes to help me to make the godly decision that I need to make? We need each other. You need to seek them out. If you're having trouble in your marriage, then you need to seek out someone that has a strong marriage. Pray about it and say, God, who do we need to partner with concerning our marriage? Uh, you know what? We have all kinds of, of groups and things here at the church that uh, our freedom group, you can go through that and there are people that will walk with you so you can get free from addiction, so you can get free from emotional bondage, so you can get free from mental bondage. God is there to help you. Our church is here to help you. We have life groups where you can walk with people on, on parenting and, and growing closer to God and, and getting active and serving in our community. That's what we are all about. That's what the kingdom of God is all about. Finding someone, walking with them, meeting a need, so they can serve somebody else. The next thing, Christianity 101, all right, is this. You need to choose your friends. Choose your friends. Verse number seven. No one who practices deceit shall dwell in my house, and no one who utters lies shall continue before my eyes. You need to choose your friends. Some of you, you've been friends with people since high school, and every time you see them, they're negative, they bring you down, they speak things in your life, and it makes you feel bad. You walk away feeling worse than what you did when you first met them. You know what? If there are people bringing you down, you need to say, God, I'm giving them up, and I'm walking away. Listen to me. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says this, Bad company corrupts good behavior. Bad company corrupts good behavior. God wants to make you something great. And that's not to say that they're not a good person. And you may absolutely love them, but maybe you just need to separate yourself for a season from them so you can become spiritually stronger. So maybe you can witness through your actions. They'll see and say, hey, there's a change in their life. How did this change come about? What, what, what's going on in this change? You need to choose your friends. We have a church full of great people that love God. And you can make friends here. You can grow with us here, all right? You can be a part here. Christianity 101, leaving the bad company behind. Yeah, but they need Jesus. I know they need Jesus. And you leave them in the hands of God and God will send someone to witness to them. God will send someone to convict them, but it may not be you. And so you need to learn to walk away, all right? Uh, the last thing, repent daily. Verse number eight, morning by morning, I will destroy all of the wicked in the land, cutting off all the evildoers from the city of the Lord. Repent daily. Now, some of you are watching this and you're saying, well, I'm a Christian. That doesn't matter. You need to repent daily. Paul makes a statement in first Corinthians 15 and 31. He says, I die daily. As a child of God, you should die daily to the things of the Lord. Lord, is there anything in my heart that isn't right? 
Is there anything in my life that, that isn't what it needs to be? God, if that's the case, forgive me. You know what? Some days I get mad. And when I get mad, I have to repent and ask for forgiveness. Some days I, I, I'll get arrogant or prideful. And, and, and when God knocks me down a notch or two back where I need to be, I have to repent. Some days I say things with my tongue that, that are sharp towards my wife or my kids or someone else. And, and I have to go back and say, hey, I was wrong. Forgive me. I get road rage. I drive down the road and people just, I'm the only one in America that knows how to drive right. I think sometimes. Yeah, you're there too. Uh-huh. And I have to repent and say, God, I was wrong for yelling at that person. I know they didn't hear me, but I shouldn't have yelled at them. I don't know what's going on with their day. I have to repent daily. I love, I love on Sunday morning, whenever, whenever we are, are, are at the end of service, we give an altar call and pastor or, or Chad or whoever's up there will say, hey, we want everyone to pray with us. Why? Well, number one, because it helps those that are making that first time commitment to understand that we're in this together. But number two, it also gives me the chance to search my heart and say, God, if there's anything, forgive me. And I make you Lord of my life all over again. I make you Lord of my life all over again. And so I repent daily. And that's what David tells us right here. So those are the things, Christianity 101. Let's hit them one more time before we close out, okay? Worship and meditate on the things of God, all right? Uh, make decisions that honor God. Love people and not their junk. Choose to follow the higher standards of God. Seek out godly people to walk with, spiritual mentors, all right? Choose your friends. Choose who you're going to live life with and, and are they encouraging you and lifting you up? And then finally, repent daily. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. Hey, I hope you're having a great summer and I hope you're having a great week. And I pray that this word encourages you today. All right. So God bless you. Come join us Sunday right here. Three services, 830, uh, 10 o'clock and 1130. Join us at one of those services. Join the dream team. Sign up for next steps. Join the dream team. Serve your church so that you can reach people and love people uh, along with us as we uh, as we work to win Jeff's city for Jesus Christ. All right. So God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you later. Thank you.